Hi, I'm Jason Sullivan of Rathbun Group, and this is On Subrogation. This video discusses declaratory judgment actions, or DEC actions, and how they may apply to you as a subrogation professional. A declaratory judgment is an action before the court where parties ask the court to determine the party's rights and responsibilities, usually under a contract. Since an auto policy of insurance is a contract between that insurer and their insured, it may be used when a carrier has issued a policy but wants to have a ruling that there is no coverage, that they don't have a duty to defend or they don't have a duty to indemnify under that policy for some specific reason. In that case, the insurance carrier, the plaintiff in that scenario, may use the action to try and get the court to clarify the party's rights. If you get a pleading on your desk and you're trying to figure out what it is, it's not a claim for UM coverage, it's not a claim of liability against your insured, why are we even in this suit? It may be because it's a deck action by another carrier. If you have a clear liability case in front of you where your insured is obviously not at fault and your company and maybe the insured are named as defendants, it's very likely that you're looking at a deck action. The form of that pleading is going to have the other insurance carrier as the plaintiff. They will name as defendants their alleged insured, potentially the driver of that insured vehicle, as well as your company, maybe your insured, and any other party that was involved in that loss that may have a claim for damages, which ordinarily the insurance company would have to pay. In the pleading, the insurance company is going to lay out the fact that they issued a policy, that there was an incident, that all these parties may have a claim, but the insurance company does not have any obligation under the policy for some reason. It may be something like fraud or misrepresentation by their insured in obtaining the policy. It could be something as simple as the vehicle wasn't covered under the clear language of the policy, or any other reason that an insurance company can think that it may not have a duty to pay under that policy. In other words, that policy wasn't triggered or that policy was void for some other reason. The relief that's going to be sought in a deck action is not monetary damages. Rather, the plaintiff, the insurance company, is going to ask the court for a ruling that there is no coverage under the policy or the policy was void, and therefore there's no duty owed to that insured or any other party that might have a claim for liability damages from that incident. If you're an insurance subrogation professional, you always want to make sure that it is truly a deck action. If there's a claim for damages and it's not answered immediately, you have exposure for your company and potentially bad faith if you've left your insured open to exposure. If it is something where the other party is just seeking a decision on whether they owe a duty to their insured, then you can take a little closer look and determine, do you have anything to argue that there should be coverage? Frequently, this can be difficult because you didn't fill out the application for that insurance policy you didn't authorize drivers or designate excluded drivers. You don't really have the information to refute the facts that are going to be set forth in that plaintiff's complaint as to why there's no coverage. However, you do want to look closely and see if they're misconstruing or taking something that's very clear and trying to make it ambiguous so that they don't have coverage. If you have to rely on the potentially uninsured motorist to make the claim that there's coverage, that's not really the person you want to have to rely on. If you can do anything yourself to fight for coverage, you want to make sure you do that. Why? Because it's a lot easier to collect from an insurance company than an uninsured motorist. And if the court comes down and rules that there is no coverage, then that company is not going to have to defend, they're not going to have to indemnify, and if you do proceed on that subrogation claim and get a judgment, you're going to have to go after that individual personally through all the remedies that you have available there's not going to be insurance coverage through that policy backing them up. If you have any questions or have a video topic you'd like to see us address on on subrogation, please let us know at video at rathbonegroup.com. For Rathbone Group, I'm Jason Sullivan, and that's the long and tort of it.